vai conduzir o workshop que vamos ter neste, neste espaço. Muito obrigado. Fernando, Hello everybody, good morning. I'm going to speak English, even though it's not my first language, but uh, for two minutes in there. So rather than speaking Spanish to you, I'm going to try to explain and to tell you some things about Facebook. And I'm going to do it in English. So uh, please, whatever questions you have, uh, if you want to keep it to the end of the, uh, of the, of the presentation, and we can, I try to ask you as many questions as, as possible, and I want to get it solved. All right? Good. Well, thanks a lot for the organization for inviting us. I would like to thank them for having this spot for us. So, great. And I'm going to tell you what, what's going on with Facebook right now. We're saying that social representation, here we, we have the title of social by design because everything under our point of view, everything is going social. And we're going to see through the presentation. But since the uh, well, very beginning, the evolution of the internet, I'm going to show you things that may be obvious. But from the first uh, things we had available for us, uh, we were not uh, able to control what the first index were giving us for information. For example, were the newspapers, the yellow pages, or whatever. When they introduced, and with the introduction of internet and the first uh, search engines like Google, uh, Yahoo, Aziz, or even MSN, which is called now Bing, uh, we were able to find everything that was available in the internet. And then the next evolution was the introduction of the user generated content. We, as people, as users of the internet, were able to look for something and even generate content by ourselves. Right? And the next step of that is that with the introduction of the social networks, we are not even able to search, but even able to share all that content that we're searching in the internet. That's why we say that we are making an evolution in the internet and we are uh, migrating from the era of the search to the era of the share. Everything is shareable and everything is something that we can share and we can share with our friends, which is cool for the brands too and for us. Imagine, the evolution of the internet and the actual data that we have in the internet is that portals are having 21% less spending time of users in portals. In search, we are spending 1% more time than years before. And the growth of the internet is becoming through the consumption of the image in the internet with the social networks, which has risen 52% of minutes of consumption in internet. And for us, as users, the evolution of the internet has come through different steps. Before the uh, social networks were born, we were just an individual hidden behind an email address, such as Superman or later Princess 74, whatever. Since the social networks have born, we are able to show ourselves as we are, to share the content with the people that we like, and we can control everything that we share. And this is basic for us, this is basic for, for Facebook, because we want the people to be able to control what they share, what we share, because this is going to make us be more shareable, being capable of share more things. And this is going to end up in a world more open and connected. This is the basics under uh, Facebook is built. And we are identified with our footprint. We are real identities, and this is the way we are. We show the rest of the people the way we, we, are, we, the way we are in our real uh, identities. And this is what is happening right now. So we're changing from the what to the who. Let me see if I can explain it. Because there's 80 million websites around the world. And we see that there is already much more. But officially, we have 500 million profiles in Facebook. If you read in the newspapers, there's a couple million more officially, and we'll make it officially in a few days. But actually, there are 500 million, million profiles, which is making that for the brands, everybody can access whatever site we, can, we want to search for, and we can access whatever site in the, in the internet. But for the brands, imagine the power of being able that 
uh, from the branch that users are talking about the branch. And we, as users, are making this content shareable between the people we like, and the, the people we trust, and the people we want to make this content shareable. So for marketeers, it's really important that we, as people, are becoming, are making our personal profile the center of our internet navigation. Because in our homepage, in our profile, it's only happening the things that we really want to happen, and nothing else. We control who is our one in, in our network of friends, and we control what brands, which brands do we want to follow. So, in our profile, it's only happening what we really want to happen. And this is uh, what borders are really replaced by connections, and this is an application that you can download and you can see what, how many connections do you have around the wall, which is very useful, very useful, visual, and very funny to see. But uh, social networks such as Facebook is not uh, well, something that happened only with Facebook. We can see that in other countries such as Brazil, with Orkut, there's another social network which have had a really great success and they have 25, 28 million users in Orkut, but look at China, look at China and even Russia. We also have a uh, social network, local social network, called Be Contacted, and they have 104 million users. And in China, which is an emerging market, not, not yet such an emerging market, but they have as a, a, a social network called Qson, and it has 305 million users. Which you can see that this is not Facebook, it's not a unique concept, but it's something that has happened around the world. But what happened with Facebook? Facebook is not a local site. It's a multinational site. And that's why I think that this is why the success that Facebook has had. But I think that everything is going social, as we said in the first slide, and industries are transforming to being social as well. And we can see different examples, for example, in the gaming industry. I think that everybody knows the thing that this uh, game uh, company that was born under the umbrella of uh, the social networks and has had really a great success with games such as Farmville or many others that you might know and you might use. Well, the growth of these uh, platforms like Xbox or even Tinga with Farmville has been because these games are social. We can share. And when you play these games, the way you can evolve with these games is by sharing, by sharing with your connection, with your friends, and you have to improve, when you want to improve this game, you have to share it with your friends, which makes a really social game and makes it really success. In Farmville, I think that the first, uh, the first week or the first, I think that for the first week that uh, thing got launched Farmville, there were already 300,000 mm, uh, 300, users playing Farmville. So imagine this phenomenon. And with Xbox, it happened the same thing. Well, when they introduced, when they uh, made it social, when they introduced the possibility that people who share this experience playing Facebook, it uh, happened that their incomes raised dramatically. And it happened also with the news. It happens all the time, and you can see it here in the papers, like New York Times, or even in Twitter, or even in a local a Portuguese uh, newspaper like the Arena Vitias. It's like 43% of the news are being shared, being shared in social networks. And this is something that you do, as I do all the time. We can share news. And this is happening, it's a phenomenon for the newspapers or for the, uh, these uh, pages that we can get information from because they tell us that they are giving, they are having more traffic from social networks actually than they have from the search engines right now. And the music is also organizing around people. And there's two examples, Pandora and Spotify. Pandora is a site. I don't know if you can access here. In Spain, it's not accessible. But Pandora, they have 60 million users around the world. And it happens the same with Spotify. Spotify, they have 7 million users around the world. But imagine, they've created 100 million playlists which can be shared in Facebook, in Twitter. I mean, you can be uh, surfing. You can be willing to uh, listen to your music, your desired music. But if you share your experience on Spotify, you can see the number of users, your friends in Facebook, that have access to Spotify. If you share your list, you can access to the share 
to this list that they share with you. You can listen to the music that they want to share with you, which is really a cool, a cool experience, and you can experience it too. And with the shopping, it's happening the same thing. It's organizing around people. Why? Because two examples, Groupon and Amazon. Groupon is experience to buy in groups. And that happens, well, that gives up the idea that it increases an average, uh, the order avenue and average in a 50% when you buy things in a group because you get it cheaper. When you get cheaper things, you buy even more. And that's happening in Groupon. And in Amazon it's happening something like that. So in Amazon, and this is a screenshot I just get, if you access with your uh, profile of uh, Facebook, for example, in Amazon, you can see the experience is totally different because the experience is becoming social experience. You can see I access this morning to my Amazon under my, well, I register in Amazon with, uh, with my uh, Facebook profile. And then you can see which one of your friends are uh, having his birthday today. And you got recommendations because Amazon is accessing to the profile or the information that these friends of you are introducing in their profile. So you get recommendations from the things they might like and you might buy, you might buy for giving a present to them. So imagine this experience, how incredible it is. And even the institutions, just the last example, like the Red Cross or the British monarchy, they are becoming also social. The Red Cross is a great example because after the IT earthquake, they got in 24 hours uh, 23, no, no, sorry, 35 million dollars in donations from the people around. So imagine what that means for the guys involved in there. Well, Facebook is an open platform. Everything you can access, and you can make APIs, APIs. You can get whatever, and you can introduce it to Facebook. That's why the phenomenon of Facebook has what growth so dramatically. At the very beginning, Facebook was only a place where only people would access and share their interest and share their photos or whatever. But since middle of 2008, it was accessible also by brands. And it was an open platform. Open platform where everybody could access building their own apps and making it grow, grow like it is growing like that. And we have now 50, sorry, 500 million users. So imagine the future of that. And businesses are being around people, and this is the people I trust. This is the guys of the office of Facebook in Spain, and these are my friends. This is the people I trust in the business, in the business we are in, in the business of advertising. And these are the people that I am connected all the time, and these are the people that I go to when I have whatever question I have about the internet, about Facebook, about applications or whatever. And these are the guys that we are connected the whole time. We have even groups within Facebook, so we can be connected even when we are out of the office. So this is an example that we are collecting, I mean, we are gathering ourselves in the groups, the groups of people that we trust, which is really important. I mean, the opinion that the people that we trust it's really important and trustful for us because uh, this is the relevant information that we are getting, gathering from the people that really is uh, important for us. So, imagine, more than half of, the, of Americans find news through friends and family. <coughs> this is social. 90% of people trust friends more than critics for music recommendations. That's happening as we said before. And 60% of jobs are found friends and this is happening this is really happening and we know it and this is happening here in the world everything that we've seen to now is happening in our world in our facebook home page because here the only thing that happened is what we want to happen because we see only information from the friends that we trust from the friends that we have and the brands that we follow all right but this is not important for us but this is important also for brands because here we have a lot of presences of brands, the brands that we follow. So for a brand, there are different possibilities to be, to have a presence in our world, in our world, sorry. Not only with ads, which we will talk about in a little bit, but also because brands, they can have a conversation with us. If we follow a brand, this brand can always tell us something that they want us to know. And this is happening in our world. I don't know if you can see the definition of the script, 
But here, my friends are following brands. And whatever interaction we are having with the brand, it has, it has a reflection in our world. This is such, well, it's really important for the brands because we are making, we are being advocates of brands, as people, as, people, as individuals, which this is great. And take a look at this statement. It's by well, Scott Cook, which is a board member of uh, Procter & Gamble. And what he says is that a brand is no longer what we tell as brands, the consumer, but what the consumer tell each other what it is. So this is really relevant for brands because we, as consumers, are really taking the lead on what we want for the brands to be. So imagine the potential of this message. Fans are just the beginning. Yes, they are. Fans are really the beginning because we are starting as fans we are starting a conversation with the brands. And this is really relevant for the brands. Because having brands has a lot of benefits. Imagine you are running as a brand, you are running a marketing campaign, and you have different goals, like presenting a new product, like launching a, a campaign, a contest, or whatever. And you can impact those people, those fans, but Dropping a message only on the group of fans that you have, that you have followers, that you have for followers in your brand is only the beginning. That's just the beginning. But this is not enough, but enough, uh, uh, let's say, what? but is the, is, the, is the word. This is not enough for the brands. Because brands, as I said, fans, sorry, as I said, are just the beginning. To amplify the message, you have to use, the best way to amplify the message is to use these fans that we have in your page, but also using Facebook ads. With Facebook ads is the easiest way that you can wipe and amplify the message to a whole group of fans. Because the more fans you have, the more capability of reaching the friends of those fans. Let's have, let's make a rapid match with this. Imagine you have a page which has 100,000 fans. It's an average around the world. Every Facebook user has an average of 130 friends. So imagine the potential of dropping a message in a box where there's 100,000 fans following you. And imagine the potential that these fans are all interacting with your brand at the, at the same time. What is happening then? Then it's happening that if your fans interact with your brands, there's a potential of 13 million users, friend of your friend, friends of your fans, listening to your message. This is, this is happening only in social network, and this is happening only in Facebook. The word of mouth in Facebook is so powerful, it's something we have to consider at all times. And brands are, lear are learning right now to consider. And this is a uh, new match. Well, it doesn't need to read the list, but this is what is happening in Facebook. You drop a message, and automatically it's spreading the word around the group of fans that you might have on your page. So to start, well, let's get started. To start, the first thing, the first step, is to build a fan page. This is the beginning. If you don't have a fan page, well, you can be advertising your brand in Facebook too but you're losing all the power of engagement in Facebook. So we recommend that all the brands might start building their own fan page and then start the conversation with the fans. It's really important to start the conversation with the fans at the very first time that we introduce, that we publish the page. And then if you want to amplify your message, if you want to make it bigger all the time, then you can do it by ads which is the fastest way to get to a bigger amount of people. And we'll see afterwards a few tips of how you can do that. You also have to consider the insights, which is the statistics that's happening on your page. I don't know how many of you have a, a Facebook page, not a profile, but a Facebook page, but, well, I am a, many, many of you, I'm sure of that, but, uh, if you have a Facebook page, you can access, access the insights, what we call the insights, which is 
the information, the whole amount of information of what's happening with your page in Facebook. You have information of how many users you have, how many users are dropping, because you might have users that they don't like you anymore and they drop, you can have. You have information of uh, audience, independently of how many users you have, Facebook followers you have, you have the information about uh, audience, and you have information about the feedback you get from them. And that's the, those are the insights. And it's really important to follow the insights, to understand them, and to take a look at it periodically. This is really important. So, this is the beginning. For example, with a Gorten list, which is a brand, that it's also here in, in Portugal. Well, the first thing they did was creating their Facebook page. And they start, at the very first moment, engaging with the fans. Not only with comments, but also with advertising. Targeting the right people. You can also, and we'll see it afterwards, you can always target only the people you want to target. There's a lot of targeting options in Facebook. We'll see that. But this is the, uh, well, the circle that you have to build the whole time. Thinking always about the people you are talking to. All right? It's very important for a brand thinking about the people first. And then how we can address, or what kind of messages do we have to address to those people. I think about the people first. And you can well, follow this circle, amplifying the message, and engaging with new fans all, at all the time. But think about this one thing. Every time you publish a message, every time you print an app like that, there's a lot of people behind listening to your message. But maybe you won't reach at the very first time, but also the friends of your fans that are talking about you. They are your advocates, which is really important. So, for principles of social design, let's take a look. First of all, as I said, people first, content second. Think about people, think about your, your, your fans, and think that maybe you don't always have to sell your products to your fans. Think that they might be interested in something different than your products, and maybe they are interested on something of some characteristics of your brand. And that's why Facebook is so important, because you can make, well, you have like a focus group in Facebook, you have, if you have 40,000, you have 50,000, whatever amount of people following you on Facebook, you have a focus group over there. And there are people that nobody told them, told them to follow a brand. They're followers of the brand just because they want to. So that's really important for us as a marketeers. Make it simple, make sharing simple and fast. All right. The content is very important for the people, but then when you decide what kind of content are you publishing, make it fast and make it simple. People are consuming pages in a really fast way. So messages have to be fast and simple. A few people can activate many. Well, think about that. Think about the word of mouth that's happening in Facebook. A few people that you reach, they can have a lot of friends, 130 as an average. And your friends are there. They're really there. Well, in Spain we have 14 million users. In Portugal there are 3.5 million users of uh, Facebook monthly, on a monthly basis. And think about your friends, the friends of the people that follow you are there, and there's only a mother of looking for them and certain. So, we talk in Facebook a marketing revolution. We are shifting from, let's see, what's the point here? We are shifting from, sorry, from the volume marketing to the pinball marketing. Before the, what? Well, before we had social networks, there's only one way to communicate with users, dropping a message. Now, with social networks, there's a different way of communicating with users and keep receiving feedback the whole time for, with them. Right? People like to talk to your brand. I mean, you only, you only have to learn what's the best way that you will get feedback from your friends, from your followers. Because it's really a matter of perception, but we're shifting from this kind of ad, which is really simple. It's a title, text, and a picture, 
So this kind of fact, sponsor story, we'll talk about it later on a little bit more. But here, people, our friends, are recommending a brand. And you know it. I mean, we are surrounded by messages, by advertising impacts the whole time, TV, newspapers, walls, whatever. But when you come to decide what kind of product do you have to buy, do you really trust all the messages, the whole messages that you get the whole day? Yes, we do. We trust the messages. But at the very end, when it comes to take a decision, a final decision of buying something which is really relevant for us, what do we do? We ask relevant people for us. We ask the people that we trust. And this is more relevant than whatever impact advertising impact that we have. And this is happening in Facebook. Why? Because the people, the friends, the people we trust are telling us what they like and what we might like too. So this is what the kind of messages that we are receiving in Facebook. And again, another example is uh, well, uh, an, adverti an advertise. And this is an advertise with social context. The people, our friends, are telling us or are are pushing us to know about a certain brand and are telling us what they are doing with this brand. We'll see more examples of this uh, ads afterwards. So we're telling that volume helps scale the message. Why? Because each time, sorry, each time that a user interacts with a brand, there's a chance that 130 people are listening to this impact. This is word of mouth. Recommendations. Users interact 25% more with brands that shows social context. What social what? Social context. This is social context. We see an ad. The ones the, the ads that you see on Facebook, if you are Facebook users, if you see an ad, this is social context. The social context is the people that are already followers of a brand and they are included in the impact that we are seeing on the page. And this is relevant for us. And that's why the interaction with this kind of ads, it uh, rises in 20%. The interaction is the people or the interaction rate that we, have, that we as users make in the brand. And follows drive recommendation, because if you have 50 connections, 50,000 followers in your brand, there's a chance that 50% of the ads that you buy on Facebook, they have social recommendation. But if you have 500,000 connections, that percentage rises to a 40% of the people that will see the ad. And what's the outcome, the outcome of all of that? Well, easy. New word of mouth is twice as effective because a difference between one, well, between the right hand ad side and the left hand ad is the social context. Well, the difference that we test with these ads is that Data on the right hand side increases the ad recall 1.6 times, increases the message awareness 2 times, and the purchase intent even 4 times. So it's really interesting to think about the power of recommendation of friends. And this is the way that brands can communicate to the friends. We can see only there's only two placements in Facebook. And the ads are really integrated. You will see, you will never see an ad, an ad, well, an advertisement which will occupy the whole page. No, we don't want that. We want ads that will be integrated in the page. Why? Because the same way that in our page only happens the things that we want to happen, we only see information from our friends, from the brands that we follow. The same way, the same thing is happening with the advertising. We, as Facebook, would like, really like, or want in the future that all the advertising that we see in Facebook is relevant for us, as users. Because this will make it really, well, relevant for us, and it will make our surface, surface of Facebook really important. That's why we have a lot of segmentation capabilities. But, to start with, there's only two options to see ads. On our homepage, which is the first page that we see when you access your uh, Facebook profile, you access to the first page, which is your homepage. We call it home page. There's only one ad 
in this place. What's the difference with the rest of pages that we use to navigate in Facebook? Well, on the rest of the pages that we use to navigate in Facebook, you find a set of four different ads. What's the difference? Well, this is a premium ad because there's only one brand at a time. Only one brand. And there's, it's the only spot where you can add a video. All right? Which is really relevant. And it's the first impact that we as users are watching when we access Facebook. All right? And we'll see afterwards how do we recommend to be in one premium place or marketplace ads. Targeting options. This is uh, available for any any advertiser. Any advertiser that really wants to impact a bunch of users in Facebook, they have all these targeting options. Demographic, well, sex, age, uh, city where they live, interest, keywords, categories. There's a lot of options that you can decide that you can choose to impact the right people that you want to impact. Only the right people that you want to impact. And excluding those people that they are not relevant to you. And the, the engagement ads, the ads that we use in Facebook, these are the four types of ads. The like ad, poll, event, or video comment. The like ad is the ad that you will see more often because it's the one that is more often used by everybody. There's a poll, you can make a poll, but you want to impact only men, only women, only men above 18 or whatever. And you can impact and ask them something about you, something about something, well, whatever you want to know about the people. You can make an event, a virtual event, and put it on Facebook. And you can say, well, we have a release, a movie release this Friday, that's going to be, well, a great success. And you can make this event, and you can tell the people that they can access this event. All these formats are shareable. I mean, you can access to this format. You can say either you will go or not, or maybe. But when you answer this event app, you can share it with your friends. Maybe you would like to access to a concert or a movie release or whatever, and then you can tell your friends. So this is social, again. You can tell your friends that you're gonna, that maybe they would like to access with you. And you can become fan of this brand too. And then you have a video comment app uh, format too, which is uh, well, an app uh, which brands are using to know the feedback of the users. You can make your post, post your comment on this app, and the comment that you post here will appear in the page, in the brand page, and in our page too, and in the page of our friends. So everything, as you can see, is really social. And there's another possibility for advertisers, which we call a sponsor stories, which is really amazing for us. We found out that the sponsor stories is really well, an integrated app uh, an extension, of course, of, of what we are doing in Facebook. Imagine, I become, I like a brand, and I become a friend of a brand. All right. When I become a friend of a fan, what happened? In my wall, and in the wall of my 130 friends, there's a news feed which says, "Herman likes this brand." All right. <coughs> I'm telling the friends, my friends, what I like. That's cool. Sponsor stories, what is telling my friends is that I have become a friend of a brand. But not only through my wall, but putting an ad like this on the right hand side where you can see all the ads. So what does it mean? That I am being ambassador of a brand. Me, individually, as Germán Martínez, are telling my friends, not only my wall, which is this news in the wall, can drop down on the importance, on the relevance, because there's new things happening all the time on my wall. So they might see, at a certain moment, that I've become a fan of whatever brand. But if you, have, if you buy sponsor stories, this sponsor story that I've become a, brand, a fan of a brand is being positioned on the left-hand side where any of my friends can see what's happening with this brand and what I did with this brand. So imagine the potential of this brand. And I can tell you, the brands that are using sponsor stories on their campaigns, they are having well, dramatically uh, rising increases on the number of fans they are achieving with these campaigns too. Now, premium ads, this is the recommendation for our premium ads. What we do in our office as a sales office, 
uh, we recommend the brands what they should do. I mean, if they tell what should I do, if I want to advertise on Facebook, what should I do? Well, we make our recommendations and we tell them what, under our point of view, what they should do. Okay, premium ads are relevant because they have a hundred percent of voice of your target. They have one guaranteed delivery. Users don't have to leave this page to become a fan of whatever brand. The home page is one of the most trafficked pages. Why? Because we always, there's no way to access Facebook but by our home page. Then you can access the rest of the pages, all right? And then engagement really expects, sparks sorry, organic sharing. What does it mean? Whatever action that a user is doing with the brand is being reflected in his wall. So his friends or my friends are seeing what I do with this brand. And then marketplace. Marketplace are, well, advertisers or ads, sorry, that are rather indicated to actions like offset clicks or maybe transactions, install games, e-commerce or whatever, uh, direct response actions you might gain or you might want or with, with, your, with your campaign. Right, so this is two placements. Graphically, graphically, we want to put in this graph uh, where we can see if a campaign is a short campaign, short period campaign, or a long period campaign, and then on the vertical axis we uh, put the, uh, seg the segmentation, the targeting options. If you want a broad target <coughs> on there, or if you want a demographic or a specific targeting. If you want a short campaign impact a lot of people and you don't mind target, there's a really long recommendation which we will talk right now about it. If you want to make short campaigns but targeting with a certain group of people, then there's a target block indicated in this case. We'll talk about it right now. And then most of the campaigns we're working on with our clients are long-term campaigns where are different objectives they can they push with. Which we, which we recommend different kind of actions. But let's talk about the rich block. A rich block is an ad that has a presence of one day. It's a, like a wallpaper or a, or a presence of a 24 hour day. You reach 100% of the people in one certain day. In Portugal, a rich block will mean that you can reach uh, 1.6 million people per day. I don't know how many impressions, but maybe with five, five million, million impressions. So why should I do that as a brand? Well, when you have like a, well, a new release, a presentation of a product, or something you, got, you really want everybody to know about that, well, you can have, you can make a rich blog, and you can assure that everybody that will access to your Facebook page, to his Facebook page in that certain day, they will see your ad. Then we have a target blog. Is similar to the rich block. A target block is indicated for those uh, campaigns, short period campaigns, that you need to target a little bit more. For example, users between 18 and 34, maybe. And these campaigns will be running in three following three consecutive days. Right? So this is different options that we recommend to our brands. And independently of the, on, well, depending on the scenario, there's different scenarios that we can follow or we can manage with our clients. Independently if there's a product launch or a constant or a long-term campaign, we have what well, we make these kind of recommendations that what well, it's like something that we, the way we work with our clients. I don't know if, uh, by the way, you know how many kind of presences you can have in Facebook? I'm going to tell you because it's really important and it's really something that not everybody knows. But there's only three types of presences that you can have in Facebook. It's a personal page, which is the page that we all have. I have my page, I'm Martin and Dormo, and you have your personal page. Your personal page cannot have more than 5,000 friends. If anyone can manage more than 5,000 friends, raise your hands, please. That's a lot, and it's incredible. I mean, so we consider as Facebook that if you can manage more than 5,000 friends, what you need is a public page. A public page is a page that there's no end. I mean, you can have as many followers as you are able to assume. And it's indicated for brands 
for personalities, for institutions. What's another difference, another important difference between a personal page and a public page? A personal page, you have uh, friends, and you share the things you want to share with your friends. On a public page, you have followers, you don't have friends, you have followers. And you don't know anything, personal information, any personal information of your followers. The only, yeah, the only information that you can access when you have a public page is information uh, as a whole of your, of your followers uh, per age, per city, and per sex. So you have statistics, or you have 50,000 friends and followers, sorry, on your page, you have statistics of the uh, age, sex, and city where they are from but you don't have any information of his personal profile. This is very important to know because some brands, if they make a mistake and they start their presence in Facebook with a personal profile, uh, well, this is illegal, all right? Because if you are a brand and you make a personal profile, you start with a personal profile, well, you are accessing personal data of the users and you cannot, you are not allowed to. So take care about that. And the third possible presence, five percent Facebook, are groups. Anybody can make a group. We have in the company with these bunch of people you saw before. We have groups, and we communicate. And you can make groups for parties, for whatever. And whoever can make a group. So this is the three type of presences that you can have in Facebook. So to wrap up this first part of the presentation, the web is reorganized around people which is creating new opportunities for brands. Think about this. Businesses are transforming how they relate to people. Businesses are thinking a new way of communicating with the people. And that's happening because the social networks. We, sorry. And companies are recognizing and being aware of this shift, and we are helping them to understand how these improvements, or how can they achieve their objectives using Facebook. I want to follow up with another presentation, smaller, but I think it's relevant to you too. We talk about marketplace ads, which is direct response ads, which is the ads that, as you saw before in one slide, these are the ads that you can see not on your home page, but on the rest of the pages that you use when you navigate in Facebook. These are the ads I'm talking about. When you see a set of four ads here, you are not navigating on your home page, you are navigating on the rest of the pages. Well, this is marketplace, and this is indicated for campaign ads, direct response, or continuity of campaigns. All right? What I want to tell you, these campaigns can be bought on an action page on an action buy, let's see. And these campaigns are indicated for transactions, off-site clicks too, for deployment of apps, for e-commerce, or to achieve new items too. Because you can access all the options of targeting that we've told before. But I'm gonna make, but I'm gonna go through 10 tips for you to optimize your campaigns in marketplace, because I think that they are relevant. The first one, Use evocative imagery. Be straight. Uh, people will leave our navigation because of our eyes. If our eyes recall on something really relevant for us, we can fix or we can take a look at that. If it's not relevant to us, we don't care. We pass by. So use the very first glance of what we see. It's really relevant for the app and for the success of the app like this. There's a big difference between the click-through of this ad and the click-through of this. And nothing to tell between the click-through of these four ads. This click-through is much bigger than this one. Don't tell me why. That is like an image is really closer to us and it's really calling our attention. The bottom ads that you see here, circle with the different colors, they are relevant to us. At least we are looking at those ads. 
Maybe they are not relevant to us, but at least we are looking to us. Use multiple creatives for a single ad. This is really important. I mean, when you run a campaign, a marketplace, you can use different creatives. You must use different creatives. Why? We'll see afterwards. But if you use the same creative, it will burn out real fast. It can be burned out in one day, two days. So send different things to the same people, to the target people that you want, but tell them different things. For example, Capital One, which is a UK campaign, and a UK client, which we have and we are working with. It was really difficult at the very beginning to work with them and to achieve good results in these campaigns. But we realized that they were using just conceptual um, 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 ads, which is, I mean, the text they were using and the, uh, the, the claim they were using, was the, word, the claim they were using, it wasn't really relevant for the people. Then we start working on the creatives and they end up working with as many creatives as you can see here, and they are targeting. You know, all these creatives, they are targeted for men, women, and different segments of age. And this way, we have achieved the result that they want to achieve, which is something as difficult as selling credit cards. Be authentic, really, be relevant, be authentic. Have one voice on your communications, and in your ads, be authentic, be straightforward, don't mess up with the users, all right? Don't mix them, don't, don't, uh, don't try to, to fool them. Relevant imaginary and tie back to your brand. I don't know if you see these, these ads, they might be silly, but this company are selling freaky t-shirts. And they say it in the text, if you don't like, if you don't like to dress with freaky t-shirts, don't click on this ad. They are straightforward, and this is how we have to be. If you don't like my brand, don't click here. But I'm sure that if you like my brand, you will click on my ad. Why? Because every user can interact with an ad. We can give feedback, which is really relevant for us as people, for you as a brand, and for me as a user. If I don't like an ad, if I'm tired, <coughs> of looking at the same app the whole time, which it happens sometimes, I can report it. And I can click on the X we have on this app and say why I don't like it. I don't like it because it's not interesting for me, because it's tricky, because it's sexual explicit, or because it goes against my feelings. I can report that. I won't see this app anymore. So this is very important to be straightforward. Try not to mix targets, this is really relevant, within the same campaign. For example, you shouldn't, you should not mix targets in the same campaign this way. This is one campaign which is mixing targets between girls and boys and different ages. Don't do that. Because there's different audiences and there's different amount of people on these targets. And there's also different amount of impressions. For this for this uh, target, okay. If the engine is considering that there's a lot of inventory in one specific target, it will prioritize this target above the rest of them. And maybe this is not the best target for us. So for every campaign, don't mix targets. This is not to do. What you should do, what you should, you should do is on one campaign. Right. On one target, put in different creatives because this is going to be optimized with the creatives, not mixing targets. <coughs> and this is what our experience is telling us that's the way to work optimizing campaigns under CPC model in Facebook. Change the campaign statistics every day on a daily basis. This is really important and this is really easy to do. Of course, if you want to optimize a campaign, this is a CPC campaign, you have to follow it up. You have to take pay close attention to it, and the tool is really getting much um, better every time. And you can see the tool. I don't know if anyone of you have access to the tool, but you can control every single campaign that you have on Facebook the whole time. So we recommend you to check statistics every single day. Another thing you should do: well, 
choose if you want to receive uh, uh, reports of the brand and you can choose uh, the machine to send you reports on a daily basis if you want. So you can make a follow-up. And make a test at the CPM model. Why? Well, there are brands that may be well, closer to our feelings, right? We like some brands like Starbucks, Coca-Cola, Danone. Those are brands that we like. But we might not like, we might not like as many, as much brands like the Ministry of Finance. Right? They check our money, they like our money. We might not like a brand like that, all right? But these brands, if those brands on the right hand side are giving a lot of information to us, we might like them too. If we perceive that the information we get, we get, the, we get from these brands because we like them, and this is relevant because this information that is useful for us, we might like these brands. Of course, the cost of conversion per fund of the Ministerio das Finanzas Portugues will be much higher than the cost per fund of Starbucks, of course. But this is like uh, extreme cases, extreme brands are behavioral of the users with these brands. The curatives also, they have also. And it can also expire. We recommend that if we have, for example, a target woman above 18, which we have in Portugal, 1.5 million users, Facebook users, woman above 15. But when we impact three times, I mean, when we uh, have or we have uh, sent three times the impressions, the amount of impressions of these users, then we have to change the creatives. This is really important, it might be silly, again, but take care of that. When we impact at least three or more times to the users, it's time to change the creatives. And the change doesn't have to be a dramatic change. Maybe only changing the title, maybe a little bit of the text, or maybe just the picture will be enough. Why? See at this real example. Just started with just this creative, and after week one or week two, when they realized that the click through rate were what well, started to go downfall dramatically, they just changed the color of the image, and they again increased the click through rate of this campaign. When they perceived that it was going down again, they again change the color. I mean, you can see that the only change is the color of the image. But for us, as users, it's a different ad. And we are not tired of seeing this ad. So we think that this is one of the uh, relevant points to keep changing the ads of the campaigns. And use sponsor stories. I love this. Sponsor stories. Use sponsor stories. Sponsor stories, they cannot survive by themselves because sponsor stories are only triggered because new fans of a fan, because a user interacts with an application in a contest or whatever, or because users respond and whatever feed that the brand is uh, publishing or the news feed. So any campaign couldn't survive just with sponsor stories. This is a complement of a regular campaign, but you'll be amazed of the results that you will achieve with sponsor stories. For example, one campaign, it's a tourist brand in Spain. In 10 days, using the sponsor stories with the rest of the campaign, they achieved 36,000 new likers in only one week, 10 days of campaign. So imagine, see, you see the graphic here? Imagine the effect of these sponsor stories. And when you have, like, well, when you start growing, which is the thing that's happening with most of our advertisers, they start growing, they start improving on their campaigns, their ad campaigns on Facebook, you need an API. When you have a simple campaign, which is like, well, maybe one targeting option, or maybe two creatives, you don't need an API. But when you start growing, like the uh, credit card campaign that we saw before, you need an API that will optimize your campaign because otherwise it will be um, impossible to optimize manually a campaign like this. And that's why 
there was an industry, a parallel industry in Facebook that has uh, born, has been created ABIs. ABIs, solutions for audit touches. And these are some examples that, has, that are in the industry. And um, what are ABIs that you can access, you can what, contact with these ABIs and tell them what's their model and how you can use them to optimize your campaigns in Facebook. So, just to wrap it up. Use evocative imagery. Different creative for the same target. Be authentic. Every word counts. Every single word you put on your ad counts. Do not mix targets. Important. Pull statistics on a daily basis. Make a test under CDN model. You can do that. Sometimes it works. Update creative every three X. Three X. Sponsor stories. Don't forget about them. And use an APA for massive creative uploads. I say that there were ten tips. There's only nine here. The ten one. Ten one. Facebook.com. That's Facebook ads. Go to it. There's lots of information. Everything that's new about ads in Facebook, we publish it here. There are lots of pages, there are lots of places where you can access Facebook to learn more about the possibilities that Facebook is giving you as advertisers to advertise in Facebook. But this is the main point that you should access. And we're publishing constantly information here. It's in English, but it's easy to understand. Three campaigns, success campaigns that we have, we have had in Spain. The first one, Procter & Gamble campaign, Gillette. They have a rich block in a one day only uh, target two males, and they have in one day 45 video starts in just one day. Well, this is a statement of the uh, Procter Gamble media manager, which she said that it was very really poor results, and it makes them increase, start increasing their presence in Facebook. Melia, hotels, hotels Melia, the oh, summer industry. They have, they start running a campaign, they just made up this Facebook page, which is called Melia. They start a contest, a contest, sorry, where they were, they were giving away uh, two or three nights uh, in this contest for the people that participate in the contest. And they achieved in five days campaign, 3,000, 30, sorry, 30,000 new fans. And it was the beginning, this was just the beginning. But how they achieve this number of funds? Because the campaign that they put on from the very, very first moment, and then they were uh, answering the inputs of the users the whole time. They kept answering the whole time and giving feedback to the users. Imagine, if you really pay close attention, attention sorry, to the feedback that you get from the users, this is interactions. Every interaction that a user has with your brand is being monitored is being watched by their brands, by their friends, sorry. So this is really important to follow. Telepizza, Telepizza, well, they sell pizzas, of course. Um, they have challenge in Spain, they want to achieve one million fans. Well, that's cool, right? One million fans, just a few ones, all right. They made this rich block in one day with five different credits, five different ads, all of them with video, ad, and in one day, which block, they get 20, sorry, 19,000 new fans in one day. Every time they are getting closer to their objective of achieving 1 million fans, they are on 300,000, I think they are right now. And they are making a constant campaign. And they are putting campaigns with branding campaigns and with direct response campaigns, so they keep pulling ads the whole time on Facebook, and they're increasing the number of fans regularly. And then, the last one, I need Spain. This is the uh, Tourist Board of Spain. Um, this campaign that they had uh, three months ago, they achieved within eight days, 150,000 fans in eight days. With different ads and different, well, it was a very curious campaign. We helped them a lot. 
but we achieved the number of fans they were, they were really looking for. And uh, this is my chip. Here we go.